Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In your previous class, we started with uh, Green's uh, theorem uh, in vector calculus. So we saw that if we if you have two functions, say m and n, which has um, uh, continuous partial derivatives with respect to x and y, uh, then in that case, um, um, then in that case, you can be able to write uh, this identity del n del x minus del m del y dx dy is equals to uh, is equals to line integral m dx plus n dy. And you take the integration, um, this uh, line integral in such a way that the region R, which is being enclosed by the curve C, uh, is always on the left hand side. So, that means uh, in a way you are walking in anti clockwise direction, all right. So, uh, that was the statement of uh, Green's theorem. Uh, today, we will um, verify few uh, Green's theorem with, uh, so with some examples. Um, the thing is, why do we have to study these uh, theorems like Green's theorem, Gauss theorem or Stokes theorem? So, you can see that on the left hand side you have a surface integral, but on the left hand, on the right hand side you have a line integral. So, sometimes uh, it is not easy to evaluate this line integral and uh, if your m and n are have, uh, they have continuous partial derivatives, then you can basically evaluate, uh, just take their partial derivatives and then you can uh, evaluate their surface integral. And uh, most of the time, it becomes a very simple expression or you have a let us say surface integral and uh, it, uh, it has a complicated uh, region and uh, other things. So, what you do, you basically identify your m and n and then you evaluate the line integral. So, it is a very handy tool to convert a surface integral into a line integral or a line integral into a surface integral and sometimes and most of the time it actually uh, make our life easier to evaluate either one of them when the either one of uh, when uh, their respective uh, integrals are in surface or line and they are complicated in a way. So, just to do this conversion it sometimes we may be able to evaluate the integral easily. But uh, right now, we will just verify this theorem. So, let us see how we can do that. So, in order to uh, verify, let me start with this example. So, verify Green's theorem. Verify Green's theorem in the plane for integral over the curve C x y plus y square d x plus x square d y, where C is the closed curve of the region bounded by y is equals to x and x is square equals to y. All right. So, first of all, uh, we uh, in order to verify the Green's theorem, first of all, we have to identify what is our m and what is our n. So, let us look at the statement. So, in the statement, it says that you have a circulation or let us say line integral m dx plus n dy. So, here you have dx and then this thing and then you have dy and then this thing. So, that means this must be our m and this must be our n. So, by Green's theorem, by Green's theorem, in the plane, what is what is the plane? So we have x, y. So this is our line y equals to x, and then we have a parabola x square equals to y. So this must be our parabola. All right. So, we have to walk in such a way that the region R must be on the left hand side. So, that means we are walking in the anti clockwise direction and then this point of intersection let us say P can be obtained. So, they basically intersect at two points first at origin and then the second one at P. So, by Green's theorem in plane this we have to verify we have to 
verify uh, del n del x minus del m del y d x d y is equals to surface uh, sorry uh, line integral c m d x plus n d y where n is x square and x y basically and uh, m x y is x y plus y square right. So, these are our m and n. Now, uh, the curves y is equals to x and uh, x square equals to y intersect intersect at. So, we can solve these equations these two equations to obtain the point of intersection. So, if you solve them then basically what we have to do is substitute x square equals y equals to x. So, this will be minus x. So, the two possible points are 0 and 1 and so y is also 0 and 1 therefore, they intersect at 0 0 and 1 1. So, we just solve these two equations and uh, we will be able to obtain these the, the point of interse intersection as 0 0 and 1 1 all right. So, we have these two points of intersection. Now, in order to verify the Green's theorem, uh, we first calculate del n del x and del m del y all right. So, del n del x would be del n del x would be uh, del del x of x square. So, this is basically 2 x and uh, del m del y would be del del y of x y plus y square. So, this will be x plus 2 y all right. Now, we will calculate the surface integral. So, del n del x which is 2 x minus uh, del m del y. Let me write the expression. So, we have del n del x minus del m del y dx dy. So, surface integral over the region r del n del x would be 2 x minus x minus 2 y and then this is dx dy. So, this will be ultimately integral over r x minus 2 y dx dy right. And now, uh, in the region r, in the region r our x is varying from 0 to 1 if we see x is varying from 0 to 1 and y is varying from x square to x right. So, y is varying from x square to x, x is varying from 0 to 1. So, let me write those limits here. So, x is varying from 0 to 1 and y is varying from x square to x, x minus 2 y dx dy. So, we first integrate with respect to y. So, this will be x running from 0 to 1 uh, then integral y running from x square to x, x minus 2 y dy and then dx. So, we integrate with respect to y first substitute the limit and then we integrate with respect to x. So, ultimately we will obtain after integrating with respect to y and putting the values x to the power 4 minus x cube dx. So, this will be x to the power 5 by 5 minus x to the power 4 by 4 and uh, x will be running from 0 to 1. So, this will be basically 1 by 20 minus 1 by 20. Now, that is the uh, surface integral. Now, we will evaluate the line integral to match the values whether they are same or not. So, in, uh, for the circulation part, we see that of course, it is a closed curve, but it is a piecewise uh, smooth curve actually. So, it is continuous from here to here and then here to here. So, we actually evaluate the line integral uh, along these two paths. So, first we will evaluate along this path and then we will evaluate along this path. So, we did some uh, an example like this. So, if we go back, so this is our C m is basically um, m is basically x y plus y square. So, x y plus y square d x and n is x square d y. So, along we can let us write c 1 x y plus y square d x uh, plus x square d y and then we have another integral c 2 
x y over c 2 x y y square d x plus x square d y. So, what do we have is basically is I am calling this one as c 1 and this one as c 2. So, the part of the parabola is considered as to be c 1 and the part of the straight line is considered as to be c 2. Now, along c 1 basically now along along c 1 uh, we have y is equals to x square and uh, therefore, d y is equals to 2 x d x. So, I will substitute d y is equals to 2 x d x here and uh, x will vary from 0 to 1 and uh, similarly along this line we have y is equals to and along c 2 and along c 2 we have y is equals to x. So, d y is equals to d x. So, we substitute y is equals to x and d y is equals to d x. So, let us call it as i c. So, i c is basically integral over c 1 that means, x is running from 0 to 1 uh, x y y is basically x square plus x to the power 4 d x plus x square uh, 2 x to the power 3 d x plus integral x running from 0 to 1 along c 2 y is x. So, this is basically x square plus x square d x plus x square d y. So, d y is basically d x. Now, we have to evaluate this uh, this line uh, this integral where the limit is from 0 to 1. Let me put everything in the bigger bracket. So, this is our given integral and if you evaluate this whole thing if you evaluate this whole thing then uh, it will be actually um, uh, you will obtain as minus 1 by 20. So, this is not very complicated to uh, obtain. So, uh, of course, there will be a minus sign here because uh, uh, I forgot to tell you because we are going in the reverse direction. So, if we are going in the reverse direction that means, we are going from 1 to 0. So, if we are going from 1 to 0 then I want to reverse the direction I want to go from 0 to 1. So, I have to put a minus sign here. So, this is this is an obvious thing that we have to remember and uh, keeping a minus sign here because initially it was supposed to be uh, 1 to 0. So, now we are doing 0 to 1. So, a minus sign and then you evaluate and then basically obtain minus 1 by 20. So, you see this is how we verify the Green's theorem. So, uh, it's it's it will be slightly lengthy because all these theorems. So, uh, Green's theorem, Stokes theorem or Gauss theorem if you want to verify then it will be lengthy because uh, you have to check both sides of the identity. So, here in this case we had to guess what is our m and n and from there we had to calculate del n del x del m del y and then substitute here and simplify the surface integral. Similarly, for the line integral I had to calculate uh, the line integral along two different paths and substitute here and uh, uh, just see whether the two sides are equal or not. So, since the both sides are equal that is that means that actually um, that uh, the Green's theorem uh, hold true in this case all right. So, uh, this was uh, an interesting uh, example where you verify the Green's theorem. Let us consider an another example where we can use the Green's theorem to simplify a, a given integral which is slightly complicated. So, example 2 evaluate by Green's theorem by Green's theorem line integral over c x square minus cos hyperbolic y d x plus y plus sin x d y where c is the rectangle with vertices 0 0 pi 0 pi 1 and 0 1 right. So, we basically have a region R. So, let me draw this region R x y. So, this is our rectangle. So, we have vertices 0 0 pi 0 which is say a then b is uh, pi 1 and then uh, b is pi 1 and then this one is 0 1 all right. So, this is our region r this is the curve c along which we have to calculate this line integral. So, by Green's theorem we know that 
Now we will see first whether by Green's whether the Green's theorem is applicable or not. So first of all, we have x square minus cos hyperbolic y, which is obviously differentiable, and I have continuous first order partial derivative, and then we have y y plus sin x, which is again having continuous partial derivatives. So that means uh, these are our m and n, and they both behave nicely. So by Green's theorem, we have to write, or we have to we, when we use so we when we use Green's theorem, so this will be del n del x minus del m del y dx dy integral c m dx plus n dy. So, that means um, since our m and n have a continuous uh, first order partial derivatives, I can use Green's theorem and therefore, this line integral can be converted into a surface integral. right? So, if I convert this line integral into a surface integral, then our n is n x y is basically y plus sin x. So, from here del n del x would be cos x and our m x y is x square minus cos hyperbolic y. So, if we differentiate then del m del y would be minus of uh, minus of uh, sin hyperbolic y right all right so then we substitute in this uh, surface integral let's say ir is equals to surface integral over r uh, del n del x is cos x minus plus sin hyperbolic y dy dx and then dx dy so then r for the region r x is varying from 0 to pi and y is varying from 0 to 1 and then we have cos x plus sin hyperbolic y. So, since we have uh, we do not have any product of uh, x and y or something. So, that means here we do not have a function of y or here we do not have a function of x. So, it is fairly easy to integrate because we then we separate the terms and uh, once we separate the terms then uh, this will be basically um, integral x running from 0 to pi we first integrated with respect to y. So, this will be y cos x plus uh, cos hyperbolic y, y is from 0 to 1 dx. So, this will reduce to integral x running from 0 to pi uh, cos x plus cos hyperbolic 1 minus 1 because cos hyperbolic 0 is 1. So, cos hyperbolic 1 minus 1 and when we integrate then this will be uh, sin x, x cos hyperbolic 1 minus x. 0 to pi. So, this will be uh, sin pi is 0. So, pi times cos hyperbolic 1 minus 1. So, you see uh, initially we had a very uh, complicated line integral to evaluate, but we just took help of uh, Green's theorem which says that uh, you can be able to use this identity only when m and n have continuous first order partial derivatives uh, with respect to y and x I believe. And uh, since our functions are behaving nicely, I just calculated the partial derivatives and put it on the left hand side of this formula and that gave us this nice result. All right. So, uh, this is one such situation where we can use that theorem and uh, obtain uh, the required uh, obtain the required surface uh, uh, the required result. Um, similarly, we can have uh, an uh, solve an another example. So, let us consider evaluate this example evaluate by Green's theorem. So, here it says specifically Green's theorem cos hyperbolic uh, sorry cos x sin y minus x y dx plus sin x cos y dy where c is the circle x square plus y square equals to 1. All right. So, here again we are given a very complicated expression uh, to evaluate and obviously, when you are told that you have to use Green's theorem, then you really do not have any way out. So, we see how we can use the Green's theorem. So, first of all, we have cos x sin y x y sin x cos y. So, they are all very nicely behaving functions. So, obviously, they are have continuous partial derivatives. So, we do not have to worry about that. So, then we can write uh, here uh, m x y is sin x 
cos y. So, what will be our del m del y? Del m del y will be minus of sin x cos y, right? And uh, uh, cos x sin y sin x cos y. So, if I differentiate, so this will be minus of sin x minus of sin y, okay, sin y. So, this is sin y and n x y is cos x sin y minus x y. So, this will be del n del x and del n del x would be minus of sin x cos uh, sin y minus of y. So, therefore, by Green's theorem, by Green's theorem, uh, we have over region R del n del x minus del m del y dx dy is equals to line integral uh, m dx plus n dy. So, del n del x is minus of sin x sin y minus y and this one is plus sin x sin y. So, you see we will basically obtain a very simple expression to solve. So, instead of working with this complicated one, we will obtain a very simple expression to, 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 to work with. So, let me write I r. I r is over r del n del x minus del m del y d x d y. So, what is our del n del x? So, del n del x is uh, minus of sin x sin y minus y minus of sin x sin y minus y and minus del m del y, del m del y minus minus plus. So, this will be plus sin x sin y. So, they both will get cancelled d x d y and then we will basically obtain over region r minus of y d x d y, right. So, now uh, for this circle r, uh, our x will vary from 0 to so, the equation of this circle is 1. So, our x will vary from 0 to 1 and y will vary from 0 to uh, sorry uh, minus of 1 minus x square 2 plus 1 minus x square y dx dy, right. Because uh, our that is the range for the y and uh, the range for the x is uh, so the range for the x is uh, 0 to 1 or what we can do. Uh, so, here you can integrate and then uh, we basically obtain. Uh, so, uh, we basically obtain uh, here um, um, so del n del x. So, this is my m oh sorry. So, this is this is our m and this is our n. So, that m. So, this is my m. So, del m del y is uh, cos x sin y. So, this is cos x, uh, excuse me. So, this is cos x. So, this will be, uh, I think I, I took the wrong m actually. So, this will be cos x cos y minus of x and this is my n. Yeah, this is my n. So, this will be del n del x. So, this is del n del x and del n del x is uh, cos x cos y, yes. So, this will be uh, cos x cos y. So, this will be cos x cos y. So, if now if I substitute then this will be minus minus and then plus yes. So, this is basically. Uh, so, ultimately here we will obtain uh, cos x cos y. So, we will obtain uh, cos x cos y cos x cos y plus x uh, plus x minus of cos x cos y. So, ultimately we will obtain here is x dy dx, right. So, we will obtain basically x dy dx. So, either uh, we can either we can have uh, x 0 to 1 and y running from minus 1 minus a square root of 1 minus x square to plus 1 minus x square x dx dy or we can substitute x equals to r cos theta and y is equals to r sin theta. So, then in that case the surface integral i r would reduce to integral over the region r. Uh, our r will vary from 0 to 1 and theta will vary from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, x will be r cos theta and uh, d x dy will be r dr d theta. 
and uh, then basically this will be uh, if we integrate cos theta then uh, this will reduce to r running from 0 to 1 r square dr and then we will integrate 0 to 2 pi cos theta d theta. So, if I integrate cos theta then it will be sin theta and uh, sin theta at theta equals to 2 pi it will be basically it will be basically zero because at theta, at theta equals to 2 pi and theta equals to 0 this whole thing is zero so ultimately the value of the integral is zero yeah so here you can see that for this given uh, vector uh, for this given uh, expression here where we had to calculate the line integral for this uh, curve c uh, yeah i guess the function incorrectly so this is my m and uh, this is our n so we have to calculate del n del x which is cos x cos y and then here we had to calculate del m del y which is cos x cos y minus x so we substitute the whole thing in this expression on the left hand side uh, and uh, then we do some calculations and either we can proceed in this way or we can um, uh, we can proceed uh, uh, we can proceed uh, in in this way uh, it's up to us and we just substitute uh, x equals to r cos theta y equals to r sin theta and the ultimate answer is zero so looking at this uh, integral it would not have been easy to guess the limit uh, that uh, um, it will to guess the to guess the value of the integral not the limit to the value of the integral that it will be zero but it's just that taking help of green's theorem we can be able to show that the value of the integral is zero by doing some simple partial derivative so you got the idea that what we have to do actually so there are there might be some errors here and there while doing the calculation i hope you would understand uh, but yeah uh, the the message is that um, whenever you have a complicated uh, line integral given to you and if your m and n uh, seems to be uh, having pa continuous partial derivatives then try to use green's theorem and uh, there is a strong possibility if you use the green's theorem then the whole integral will reduce to a very simpler one and uh, you just uh, like in this case or in the previous case you just do some simple uh, known formula or known calculation to obtain the value so uh, uh, today we tried uh, to learn about green's theorem and we also saw its uh, uh, it's um, how to say efficiency that how you can use it and how it makes our life easier while calculating the uh, integral uh, surface integral or line integral so uh, i will uh, stop here for today now and uh, in our next class we will start with the gauss divergence theorem so i thank you for your attention